Recently, my hub motor decided to separate itself from the frame while I was giving it some throttle and that resulted in this mess. There seems to be no significant cuts on those wires, but this wire is effed up beyond any bushcraft repair. And maybe a short circuit happened because the motor actually stopped working. So let's see how to check whole sensors for any damage from a possible high voltage short circuit, replace the whole wire with a new one and see how we can prevent this from happening again. So the first thing to do in a situation like this is to inspect the damage. For that I removed all of the shielding from this damaged wire and did not find any cuts but just some exposed wires in a couple of places. So next you should check if one of the main power wires made contact with one of the whole sensors wires. If yes then you may have to replace a whole sensor or even all of them. This is very good to know now so you won't have to open your motor twice. There are three of them and they are located right about here on the edge of the stator. So let's check these whole sensors for condition. For that you need just a 5 volt power supply and a basic multimeter. So connect 5 volt power to the red and black wires. Connect one of the multimeter's wires to the plus side of your 5 volt power and the other wire to one of the whole sensor's outputs. Colors on those outputs are usually green, yellow and blue. Then turn that axle just a bit and observe. If the reading switches between 5 volts and 0 volts, that means that this sensor is in working condition. Also, sometimes it can show 1 volt and 5 volts. That should be also okay. So check all of them like that and hopefully they're all okay like in my case, I was lucky. Next we need to open the motor. This is actually not an easy thing to do, especially if you have a big one like this. So you will be needing a gear puller like this massive thing. If you don't have one, then you can try to take the stator out of there by hand. Once I did do it like that, but it was super difficult and dangerous because of those powerful magnets, they are really powerful. Now I'm not going to actually take the stator out of there. I just need to open those covers, but they are pretty tight in there. So to take those out without damaging them, I'm going to move the axle slightly to free up those covers from it. There are motors that have covers on both sides and there are motors that have just one cover on one side. If your motor has just one cover on the side, then you probably have to take the stator out of there to do this properly. And if there are two covers, don't mix them while you do this, so you won't be driving backwards when everything is done. So now we can see those connections inside. This part of the job is pretty straightforward if you have dealt with the wires before. So cut the bad wire and pull it out from that channel. And you should leave bits of wire with colors in there so you will know where to connect the new wire. Also you should clean that wire channel so it would be easier to put the new wire in there. Now I was lucky and had enough of that same wire laying around. This is a very special cable. Unfortunately you can't just step into it like a radio shack and buy this stuff. So I hope you will have enough of this stuff in your possession. At least enough to get through that wire channel since the small diameter of that channel is the main reason why this wire is so special. So pull the new wire through that channel and use a fairly powerful soldering iron to solder everything nicely. Protect those connections with a good layer of tape or shrink tubing. I'm using both and secure them with good quality zip ties. This is kinda important. If something comes loose inside there, it could create a lot of damage to the motor. Also, you need to waterproof that channel. I'm using hot glue for that. When everything is nicely done, vacuum both sides so that there won't be any debris trapped inside. And put those covers back on. You need to gently align the stator, which requires some fiddling because you will be working against the force of those magnets. It's important to start screwing those fasteners by hand. This is an aluminum case, which means that the material is super soft and there's a big chance of messing up those threads. Don't be like taking a power tool and driving those fasteners in there like it's wood, if you don't wish to deal with making new threads. After that is done, check the alignment of the stator and that it spins nicely. Yeah. Now a little about why this happened in the first place and how to prevent that. So the wheel jumped off the frame and the axle rotated because I was giving it some throttle and that damaged the wire. Luckily I was not moving at that time. And yes, I know how to tighten a nut, believe me. A loose nut was not the reason for this fail. The reason is this. And that I think is the biggest problem with the whole electric bike conversion concept. 
because we need to reduce weight and we usually choose a light aluminum frame for a conversion. But those usually have dropouts with very small sized openings for the axle. And as you can see, the axle on a hub motor is so big that it merely goes all the way in there, which results in this. Here you can see how a very big portion of the surface area of this nut is just kissing the air. It's almost a third of all of the fastening strength just hanging in the air and not doing its job. Now this is not such a big design fail as it seems. The axle is pressing against the frame because of the whole weight of this thing plus the rider. And I was riding this thing for 6 years before the wheel completely jumped off. But eventually this is what happened. Cause this is aluminum and the motor applies a lot of power on this area, openings in dropouts got wider. Look how much play there is now, there should not be any play. That's not the biggest problem. At some point the axle started just sliding off because of the big pressure that was applied on those fragile aluminum parts by those massive nuts. And when those dropouts were squeezed enough combined with that play, the axle was pushed out. That's just physics. So now I'm thinking whether I can use this frame anymore. Maybe I will come up with some additional brackets to secure the axle, I don't know. But for those of you who plan to do an electric bike conversion, choose your frame carefully. There are aluminum frames out there with more massive and bigger dropouts, look out for those. Subscribe to my channel to see more of me showing and explaining random technical stuff. Please like this video. Thanks for watching.